are here with Joshua Tharby, the UK's favourite property tax accountant. And that is correct. <laughs> so welcome to my YouTube guys and today I've got my friends on Friday again, it's Josh and I'm going to talk about a topic that you know it's been ringing on the ears of the news which is the bounce back loan and um, there's been a bit of a negative press around this especially um, in concerning some property trainers actually. Is it more yeah. than one or just one? Uh, I think there's one one that springs to mind. Um, yeah, a couple of others have used, suggested using them in the, not the, necessarily the best way. Uh, there's one that made the news. So that's Paul Smith. Sorry Paul, <laughs> if you're watching this, hiya. <laughs> um, we just thought it was an interesting subject because obviously we both um, train, well, in tax and property as well. And we both invest in property. So I guess, um, let's talk about Paul's video first. Yeah. Um, and, and then I guess let's then talk about how we can legally extract the bounce back loan yeah. um, in terms of extract this money out in a legal manner so that we can then use it to buy property because yeah. I think that is the question that needs answering and people are confused about it right yeah yes yeah, yeah. but before we start guys do me a massive favor please click the subscribe button below whoop, whoop. Yeah, and do turn on the notification button because if you want to get more awesome content and video like this um, mine will pop up so I'm releasing a video every Monday every Wednesday every Friday and Friday is my friends on Friday so I'm gonna have some awesome guests such as Joshua yeah, yeah. thanks for sharing all right let's start let's talk about Paul Smith so what's going on yeah so uh, a couple of weeks ago now I think it was um, who released a video basically kind of saying about all the bounce back loans and suggesting ways in which we could take them out and that you didn't necessarily have to repay them. Um, there certainly wasn't enough emphasis put on that, the fact that these are loans and they, there is that expectation that they are repaid. I think the biggest thing that um, made people angry, let's say, so Paul, if you're watching, the bit that made people angry was it sort of got flagged up that you said um, that um, the loans didn't need to be repaid back and yeah. use it to invest in property. Yeah, is that the yeah. bit that people got angry yeah. about? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, so I think these are, I think these are loans, so they should definitely be repaid back. Um, just because you've not had to put a personal guarantee um, into place, that doesn't mean that you're basically, you can take this loan, spend it and get off completely scot-free. Because if there's that fraudulent element, if you took this loan out without um, intending to repay it, Sometimes, in some extenses, they can actually pierce the veil of incorporation, which is that limited liability that a company offers. Um, and as a result, you can be personally liable when they suspect a bit of foul play taking place. Oh, that's really interesting. <clears throat> so, from watching the video as yeah. well, I thought that maybe Paul fell into a bit of hot water because maybe he didn't make it very... I think what he was trying to say is that you have company liability yeah. and then you've got personal liability, which is very different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and maybe that wasn't... Yeah, trade it, in the best way. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. So it's, it's, he kind of mentioned that how if you've got each different limited company, you can take it out, you don't have to repay it, you personally weren't liable. Um, whereas just because you've got a company and that's got assets in and you've taken out that loan, they might not be at risk. Uh, they would be at risk, but your personal assets wouldn't be. However, what he didn't go on to mention is that sometimes your personal assets can be at risk um, because they can veal the, the um, shield veal of incorporation, they can pierce that and actually well, go after What is that for people who don't know what the, the, the veal, veal? Yeah. The, the, <laughs> sorry, can't pronounce it. The veil, the veil. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, what, what is the veil of, um, the veil of corporation? Yeah, no. the incorporation. So essentially, it's limited liability. So if you've got a limited company, the individuals that run that company, the shareholders, they're not personally liable for the debts, for the negligence, unless in very extreme circumstances. So if you were to sell some faulty goods to a, a, a client, a customer, it's that limited company, that's where the liability stops with. It doesn't go to the directors, your own personal house isn't necessarily at risk, your own personal car, that can't be taken. Um, so it's that extra extra layer of protection from your creditors and um, from your customers, essentially. That's what the um, veal of incorporation is. Yeah, so we're both of the viewpoint though that, you know, if, you're, if you take your money out, whether your business or yourself, like you should always try and repay that back as yeah. much as possible, unless there was some circumstances in your com company that prevents you from doing so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And these loans are they're guaranteed by the government, so whatever doesn't get repaid, you know, we'll all be paying for it as taxpayers. 
um, for years to come as tax rates increase. That's why people are so angry, hey? Because yeah. I was like, I didn't get it at first. I was just like, oh, Paul just didn't really make it quite clear what he meant by, you know, what we've just separated out and explained. Yeah. I'll give you something to think about. So what do you guys think of this? So um, I did business and I invested in properties in Dubai before, so yeah. I know the business landscape quite well there. But at the moment, a lot of business owners are sitting behind bars, okay? And the reason for that is because most companies um, need a line of finance so they've yes. taken some sort of borrowing out from the bank but the banks over there the lenders they require the director or the owner of the company to make a um, personal guarantee yep. so that's in form of a blank check okay. normally yep. and um, in Dubai if the check gets cashed in so let's say they fall behind their payments or if business goes down under which is happening a lot at the moment because yep. they don't have any government assistance there um, that means that they'll um, cash the check in and then it will bounce yeah. and that is a criminal offence. Okay, wow. Yeah. yeah, and what happens is, is um, these people, if they get caught, because sometimes the police do like ID checks or they might stop you on the road and ask for your ID. If they get caught, then they're thrown into jail. Wow. So either they need to say, serve a jail sentence yeah. or they pay it out. Most decide to serve a jail sentence because then it wipes that loan, Yeah. you know, it wipes their debt clear. But do you think we should be implementing <laughs> those sort of measures in yeah, England, so Josh? Thankfully, that doesn't, that, that doesn't doesn't really happen over here unless you've done some really, really dodgy stuff. Um, should we implement? I suppose it would be a good deterrent because people they do have this limited liability and they just make perhaps not the best business decisions because they they know that worst comes to case um, because of the way the law works over here. They could just restructure their business, maybe let that company go into liquidation into administration, um, and overall they'll be fine. So they, people do use this system to their advantage over here because they're not going to get thrown in jail. Do you think that is just being smart and knowing the rules of the game, but not having the best intentions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, that's what it is. You know, I suppose the only fault there is that there are those gaps in the legislation. Um, so certainly if you are using those to advantage, yeah, fair enough. But at the end of the day, especially with the bounce back loans, it's everyone who's going to pay for this through the further tax increases that are likely to happen. Oh, amazing. Um, so guys, if you've enjoyed this video so far, do me a massive favor. Um, click the like button. Actually, please smash it for me. <laughs> because that really helps with the YouTube algorithm, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful. And the next thing we're gonna talk about now is, how, Josh, can we extract money, the bounce back money out yeah. of a company in order to invest in a property? Because I think that is one of the biggest questions yeah. I'm getting asked at the moment. And I've already, I've already, like had a chat with Josh about you know my thoughts, but I think that it's better coming from you, and I can, I can yeah. you know, um, what should I say, add to the conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so there's a, there's a couple of ways to approach those. Really, the first one is checking your loan agreement to make sure there's no restriction on using it to invest in property. The vast majority I've seen, especially with a lot of the banks, there's no there's no restriction as long as it's for the benefit of that company. There's some commercial gain there. You're actually okay to use it to invest in property. The, the restriction that I've seen is that you can't use it towards um, a fixed asset. Okay. Towards a purchase of a fixed asset. So I think. Do you think that's where people have gotten where you can't use it towards a property? Yeah. Yeah. It could yeah. be. Um, yeah. I've, I've not seen that in especially most of them I've read. So Starling Bank, I've not seen yeah. that. Um, I read it for mine. I think it's Barclays. Okay. Okay. or NatWest, one of them, one or the other. Yeah, so if that restriction is there, then you might need to kind of think twice about it or look at other ways to purchase a property. Um, but one thing to note that you probably don't want to buy, if you're buying property in your own name using a bounce back loan, simply because you've got to take that money out of your company. Um, so if you use it, if you've got a director's loan, so your company owes you money already, and you use your bounce back loan to repay a director's loan, and then subsequently fail to repay your bounce back loan, there's a chance that because the bounce back loan, the way it's structured in terms of being a creditor, you could actually have that money pulled back. So you might have to repay that money because you used it to repay your director's loan account. And additionally, if you've not actually already got a director's loan account balance and you took say 50,000 pounds from your company as a loan, you'd actually um, pay 32.5% tax on that if it's not repaid for nine months and one day after the end of your accounting period. That's a lot. Yeah, so yeah, that's a lot. Of money. Uh, sorry, that's a lot. A lot to be taxed on. Is yeah. it? Is it a penalty? Um, so it's a yes. Yeah, so it's a 32.5% 32, 32 amount of tax that needs to be paid. Yeah, it's only temporary. So if you repay okay. the loan, you get it back. Okay. Um, and then other than that, I suppose you could take it as a dividend if you've got sufficient retained profits, 
or as a salary, but each of these ways you're going to pay a lot more tax and you know fundamentally this is a loan, so you don't want to be paying tax yeah. to bring a loan out. Yeah. Would it work? So say that a director took the funds out yeah. and they needed a bit, they needed some more time to sort of pay it back. Okay. Can they um, can they have an instalment plan in place? No. So they need to pay the whole so amount back. Yeah. For instance, um, okay. your year end is 31st of December 2012. Yeah. That loan, you've taken that £50,000 loan out and it's not repaid by the 1st of October 2020. Um, if, you, if that's not repaid, the, any, the amount that's outstanding on that 1st of October deadline is 32.5% tax charge on that. Wow. What about if they repaid that money back and then took a new loan out from the company? So there are actually rules around that, which is called bed and breakfast in. So if the, any, the intention of repaying that loan and taking it back out again, or if it's done within the 30 day deadline, um, it's tr treated as if the original loan was never, re never repaid. I see. So yeah, HMRC are wise to this kind of stuff. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so obviously another way of extracting money out apart from loan is to increase your salary. Yeah, but obviously yeah. that's taxable income that's, that's as well. That's taxable, yeah. Um, Josh, any other sort of creative but legitimate ways that people could you yeah, know, explore? Yeah, so, so in my view, the only, the, the only real feasible way of doing it is where you've got a kind of a group structure or other limited companies and you do simply loan it from your business that's you know trading entity you've got to bounce back loan in you lend it to your property company that's investing in property um, charge a commercial interest rate on this uh, that's really in my view the, probably the only legitimate way to actually use these funds to purchase property i think that's a great answer yeah i'm just gonna throw some curveballs at joshua because i have him here and he's great he's like you know don't don't do are we dodgeballing <laughs> We're the nerds, yeah. <laughs> dodgeballing. So uh, what happens if I wanted to buy an asset for the benefit of the company, yeah. such as a Rolex watch? Yeah. Yeah. And let's say if I'm making YouTube videos, I wanted to, you know, have a Rolex watch in the videos, you know, yeah. can I do that? Well, this is where it gets a bit technical, you know, it's got to be wholly and exclusively for the purpose of the trade. So, you know, this is what HMRC will come along. Yeah. So we'll say you, you want to claim as a tax deduction, HMRC are going to come along and say, hang on a minute, did you need to wear that Rolex watch to make this YouTube video? And you'd say, well, no, but it kind of helps, you know. Um, <laughs> and by doing that, there's a risk that they're going to say, hang on a minute, no, that, you did not need to spend that money, um, so therefore we're not giving you a tax deduction for it. Wow, okay, and what about, I'm just like throwing curveballs at Josh as well. So I've recently invested in a show horse. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put it under a company actually, okay. a company investment, and, um, it's the horse is insured and all that, but you know, I, the, the, the intention is to resell the horse at one point. Yeah. Sorry, at some point, so we make some a profit margin on that. Yeah. So, it, can I do that with bounce back loan? Well, I suppose that that's it really. There's nothing stopping you unless it's in your loan agreement. If that's what you're going to use the money for, especially if you're actually you're already doing it already and you've yeah. got a trading activity, you know, kind of horse breeding um, and things like that, then yeah, by all means, you could use that um, to invest in a horse, to buy a horse, with the view of reselling it later on, because that's your intention is to make a profit using these bounce back loans. And actually, when you're using it like this, you're using it for the intention the government intended. You have taken this loan out. Um, you've invested it, you're buying assets, you're creating jobs, you're putting money back into the economy, and you're going to generate a profit which is ultimately taxable. Awesome. What about stocks and shares? Um, so stocks and shares, yeah, potentially. Um, but again, it's probably not the best thing to do in your company simply because it's a form of investment rather than trading. So this is where it would get a little bit more speculative. And indeed, even borrowing £50,000 to invest in stocks and shares is quite a risky activity. Okay. Joshua, thanks for that. I'm just thinking, what other questions have I seen flying around? Yeah. Oh, something that's come up is, um, I saw I saw this on Facebook actually. So somebody got refused um, a mortgage. Yeah. Okay. Um, because um, because of the because the the source of the deposit has come from the bounce back loan. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know the context though around this, but what's your thoughts around? Yeah, I think it's the yeah, end of the day. The bounce back loans are intended to help people whose businesses have been impacted by the coronavirus. So if you are a lender, ultimately, whenever I see things like this, I think, how would I feel if I were the lender lending my own money? Um, if you saw somebody that had used, uh, looking to use the bounce back loan as a source of a deposit, so they're not personally liable, they've not earned that money, um, that money's kind of not got that much meaning to them, and then they're looking to borrow the rest of the money, which is going to make up the, the whole amount of the property purchase, that person's actually got nothing in, they've got no skin in the game. If they lose that property, if a tenant trashes it, they're not going to personally lose anything. So you'd be quite reluctant to in that case, or even not lend it at all. Yeah. How, 
how would the lender feel though if um, that the money came from their salary salary and they got paid an increased salary from bounce back loan because that's just working capital and a legitimate way of you know getting the funds out yeah so in that respect if you are using the bounce back loan to kind of supplement staff salaries one of those being your own and then you use your salary to go basically back into another company or buy your own name um now fundamentally that is a salary so they are kind of completely separate things so that would be fine because yes okay so interesting though so i think that you know have you heard of any other sort of creative ways what yeah. was paul smith suggesting that people were doing yeah he's basically I, suggested trying i think uh, i can't remember exactly but it, <laughs> getting a loan for basically every single company you did, use it to buy a commercial property, um, and essentially, you know, don't worry about repaying it because you're not personally liable, was long or short of it. But your, but the company should hopefully yeah, the, the company, repay the money back. Yeah, and if, I'd imagine a lot of people are using this to buy property and things like that, there's a very small chance, uh, really, because the amount of people that have applied for these, that everyone's gonna get checked. But the ones that do get checked are gonna be the ones that don't repay it. So at the end of the day, if you are using it to buy a property, yeah, you probably will, um, you won't face any issues with that most likely. But if you don't repay it and then they go in and look at what you've used the funds for, if you've taken it out personally as a salary dividend um, and didn't even trade through that company, that's when they're going to look to potentially maybe try and claw some of the money back somehow. Mm, I see. Joshua, thank you so much for this. So guys, I hope that Today's like session of you know our thoughts on the bounce back loan has sort of covered some of the queries that have been floating around, yeah. right? Um, but I think the biggest takeaway is both me and Josh Josh have applied for bounce back loans for yeah. our businesses, but so we intend to use that money wisely, okay? And we will be paying that money back. I think that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so if you guys have a bounce back loan, use it wisely. Yeah. It's, I suppose just to add to that really is a lot of people because it. Quite a lot of the banks allow you to do it on your expected or budgeted turnover. So all of a sudden, people that have only previously had ten thousand pounds of turnover are all of a sudden two hundred thousand pounds. When you don't repay stuff, when you start to not repay that loan, they're going to come along and say, "Hang on a minute, what were these projections based on? Do you have any proof of this?" And then fundamentally, if you don't, that's when it risks becoming a fraudulent loan application. Thank you, Joshua. So, guys. So I think that's come to the end of our bounce back loan video. Um, if you want me to do, you know, if you're liking this video, and you like, you know, our interaction yeah. and our online chemistry, <laughs> you know, YouTubing, let me know in the comments if you want Joshua to come back on Friends on Friday and cover any other topics. Yeah, please yeah? do anything property tax related at all, accounting, business, um, let me know. I'd love to come back. Yeah, and also Joshua has his own YouTube channel. So if they wanted to find Joshua, where do they go? Yeah, so just um, type into YouTube, Joshua Tharby. You'll see my channel. Please do subscribe. I'm posting weekly updates on there about anything tax, accounting, property related, um, tons of free value. Amazing. And guys, if you want to, want to stay tuned you know um, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel okay and the reason for that is because I'm, I was actually telling Joshua how I've managed to save thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds in my personal spending slash family spending by just adjusting two things all right guys take care bye bye